This week, we're introducing you to Raina, who's running for LG alongside Congressman Tom Suozzi, a Democrat running for governor. And just a note, we recorded this interview with Raina before the shootings in Buffalo and Texas, so we don't discuss new gun laws here. Diana, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. A real pleasure to be here with you, Dan. Thank you. So you're new to our audience. We've introduced you a few times during the show at the various events that you've been at, but I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about your experience and how you got here. I appreciate, you know, that you have given me this opportunity to really tell people who I am, right? Um, I'll start with, I'm a mom of two young boys. Um, I have my husband, 20 year marriage. He's been a lieutenant, he's a lieutenant in the department of uh, the New York City Police Department. He's a 25 year veteran. Um, we have uh, been blessed to be uh, born and bred in the state of New York, in the city of New York, in Brooklyn. I, I have worked in government uh, as a chief of staff. I have been a district leader, state committee woman. Uh, I served in the city council 12 years. Uh, and served as deputy borough president for Brooklyn uh, under Eric Adams. Uh, this is an opportunity to be able to uh, come back into government after having left four years ago, uh, because I didn't like what I saw happening. Uh, we have a an affordable house, an affordability crisis, Dan. Not even an affordable housing crisis. I understand what it is to have proven leadership, a proven track record. Uh, it's the results of our actions in government. We have to know how to govern and seek uh, what are those results, um, working with people, stakeholders, coming together, uh, holding people accountable, holding yourself accountable uh, as the elected uh, official. This is an opportunity to bring back those skills when it's much needed. It's an extensive resume in terms of public service, for sure. And something that we've learned over the past year, I think, is that we really need to have a lieutenant governor who is prepared to step in and be governor at the drop of a hat. We saw it happen with Kathy Hochul last year. We've seen it happen with David Patterson about 13 years ago when Elliot Spitzer left. Can you uh, tell our viewers what about your experience has prepared you for this moment where you could step in and take that role? Of course. This is where you have an understanding, an ability uh, to understand how to govern. Um, people find what is uh, being an elected official as if it's glamorous. Um, this is a 24 seven job. Uh, it is unforgiving. Uh, it is about listening to the people with ideas, uh, being able to understand. We may not uh, agree on everything, but we're certainly having conversations that will percolate what can be actionable items that we can work on together. Working with the legislature, being able to uh, leave the politics at the door, check in uh, what is your leftist and right uh, partisan um, ideals. Uh, because when it comes to governing, people are tired of the politics and people want to see that they can go to work safely, that they can trust that their kids are going to go to school safely, that our elderly can be able to enjoy a beautiful day outside without having to fear young people who are brawling in the middle of the street. You know, tell me about what kind of lieutenant governor you would be. Some lieutenant governors have really taken a back seat and followed the governor. Others have, have taken a more active role in some specific issues. Tell me what you see as your role in the administration if you're elected. So I want to just share, Tom and I share the same values. Um, we're first generation Americans, right? Um, I proudly uh, wave my uh, dual citizenship of being both Dominican American, um, the opportunity to be able to uh, reflect that in this administration as a Latina, um, to be able to call upon all the mayors, right? And meet with them frequently so that we can start planning on economic development, uh, community development. We've had conversations around what are uh, fentanyl and opioid uh, overdoses that are taking over communities upstate. Uh, the same is happening in the Bronx. And so when we start connecting the dots, we can really build uh, what is uh, a triage moment to be able to address 
what our uh, dire needs, uh, things that are pertinent to people and are impacting people right now, this instant. Working to make sure that uh, for public safety, we're not just talking to law enforcement, but we're bringing law enforcement along with community, along with the DAs, along with special prosecutors, the chief administrative judge, and let's review everything. Let's understand what's happening with the discovery uh, process. How do we improve that? Where are the changes that we have to seek and implement them? You know, as we talk about crime, uh, the lawma lawmakers and Governor Kathy Hochul did make some changes in the budget to the state's bail reform laws. I know you and Congressman Swazi think that they should have gone a little bit further and added a dangerousness standard for judges to abide by. Is, is there anything beyond that that you think the state should be doing to address crime? I know you have experience with this when you were in the New York City Council. You dealt with crime in your district as well. Absolutely. And the model that I had described where we work with everyone at the table, um, we have to understand that there is uh, a very complex discovery process uh, that we have to educate ourselves on, raise awareness about, and fix uh, what is not working. And so this is an opportunity uh, for people not to close the door because they're stuck on the fact that we're claiming bail reform needs to go back to what it was. That's not the case. What we're talking about is that there are certain areas we have to revisit. Uh, the intention of raising the age was fantastic for some, but what it's also doing is preying on our young who won't be charged because we've raised the age and now gangs are recruiting them so that they can carry illegal firearms. That was not the intention of raising the age. You know, another top issue in the news right now is reproductive rights in New York, given the Supreme Court's expected decision in Roe v. Wade to overturn it. I'm wondering where you are on that. The state has uh, is setting aside about $35 million in funding for abortion providers to expand and give more access in anticipation of people coming in from out of state. Is there anything else that you think the state should be doing or uh, or would be doing in the future to address that? We are strong leaders in New York State. Um, I think that there's uh, an opportunity here to pay close attention to what's happening at the federal level. Um, we have uh, what would be Tom and I, our pro-choice pro advocates, right? We believe in uh, protecting reproductive rights for women. Um, I, as a woman, uh, want to make sure uh, that we are doing our very best to protect those rights. Uh, working with organizations. But what I will not tolerate um, is what I saw just recently where protesters, extremists, are disrupting communion in a church. That is not necessary. That is where the extremists take the conversation and, be, and turn it into violence. All right, much more that we could go through, but we do have to leave it there. Diana Reyna, a Democrat running for Lieutenant Governor alongside Congressman Tom Swazi, who's running for governor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan.